The best way to minimise risk during an ICM insertion procedure is by careful patient preparation. For this reason, we recommend that you use a safety checklist to anticipate problems that may occur. There is always a risk of allergy or anaphylaxis during an ICM insertion procedure. Patients may have an allergy to the antiseptic used to clean the skin at the start of a procedure. They may have an allergy to the local anaesthetic agent such as lidocaine. Or they may have an allergy to prophylactic antibiotics if you choose to use these. If you administer analgesics to treat procedural pain, the patient may have a reaction to these. Or they may have an allergy to one of the device components, such as the titanium casing. There's also a risk of allergic reaction to any wound dressings that you use. And even a risk of allergic reaction to the latex in your surgical gloves. It's therefore prudent to specifically ask if the patient is known to have any previous history of allergic reactions before starting your ICM insertion procedure. As with any invasive procedure, ICM insertion carries a risk of bleeding and hematoma. To minimise the risk of this, it's important that we appropriately assess the patient's coagulation status prior to undergoing the procedure itself. The likelihood of bleeding complications is increased by several factors. For example, always check whether your patient is taking any antiplatelet or anticoagulant medication. Single antiplatelet medication seldom causes problems and can be continued for the procedure. For patients on dual antiplatelets, the risk of bleeding needs to be weighed carefully against the risk of withholding one of the agents. For patients taking warfarin, ICM insertion can take place as long as the international normalised ratio, or INR, is no greater than 3. For patients anticoagulated with direct oral anticoagulants, or DOACs, interruption of these drugs is not usually necessary for the insertion procedure. Don't forget also about simple procedures that can improve hemostasis. For example, at the end of the ICM insertion procedure, apply pressure over the insertion site and ensure that adequate hemostasis has been achieved before closing the wound. Simple measures such as this can significantly reduce the likelihood of bruising and hematoma. With adequate local anaesthesia, It's unusual for patients to experience much pain during or after an ICM insertion procedure. Nonetheless, if patients do experience significant discomfort, then simple analgesia will usually suffice. As with any invasive procedure, there is always a risk of infection. To reduce the risk of bacterial infection, one might consider the use of antibiotic prophylaxis the pros and cons of which have been covered in an earlier lesson. There is no consensus on the use of antibiotic prophylaxis for ICM insertion procedures, and this decision is left to clinician discretion according to local protocols. The theoretical risk of reducing the risk of device infection should be weighed against the risk of allergy or anaphylaxis, antibiotic resistance, and the increased costs for a procedure as a whole. In the effort to prevent procedural infection, careful attention to pre-procedural skin preparation with an antiseptic agent is also important. Another risk of ICM insertion is that the device will erode back through the wound. In other words, the device can basically end up poking out of the skin. To reduce the risk of device erosion, it's essential to ensure that the device is deployed correctly, and this means ensuring that the tip of the device lies around 10 millimetres from the device insertion point. This ensures that there is some leeway to reduce the likelihood that the device will work its way back out of the wound. Keloid scarring is a risk of any invasive procedure 
and ICM insertion is no different. Check whether the patient has any prior history of keloid scarring and warn all patients of this possibility. Remember that it is important to discuss the benefits as well as the risks and complications with the patient prior to ICM device insertion so that they are fully informed about a procedure that you plan to undertake. So I hope you liked this video. Absolutely make sure to check out the course this video was taken from and to register for a free trial account which will give you access to selected chapters of the course. If you want to learn how MetMastery can help you become a great clinician, make sure to watch the About MetMastery video. So thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon.